Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be updating you guys on that potential tropical cyclone offshore of the East Coast. Now, quickly before I get started with this video, I wanted to ask you guys to be sure to subscribe, be sure to like the video, and be sure to leave a comment down below because those two things especially there at the end help the YouTube algorithm get this video out to more people. For today's comment of the day, I want to know what is the maximum intensity you think this one gets up to? Tropical depression, tropical storm, hurricane? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video finally, and here we are taking a look at the two-day graphical tropical weather outlook. Uh, and really, yesterday we didn't have anything showing up here. Now we can see uh, actually where that tropical disturbance is, and it's pretty much in between Alabama and Mississippi. So it's got a little bit of ways to go before it's offshore. For this reason, it obviously has a 0% chance of development over the next two days. That doesn't mean it will always have a 0% chance, that just means for now, because once we look at the five-day outlook, you can see that we get upgraded to a 30% chance, and you can see they actually uh, kind of indicate where this one is expected to go, and you can see that arrow, it goes through the southeast states and then down into the uh, Atlantic offshore of the southeast. There's some very warm waters there right now, we'll talk about that in a moment actually. For now, yesterday we had a 20% chance of development over the next five days, and now we have a 30% chance of development over the next five days. So that has been a 10% increase. The National Hurricane Center, in their language, if you go look at their discussions that they've posted as well, uh, it does seem like they're a little bit more confident that this one could be something we need to watch. Now, the best thing to do in this type of a scenario is always to look at the satellite imagery because this is going to actually show us what's happening right now. This is nobody's opinion. This is what's happening. So with that being said, let me add my opinion to this. And you can see there is some cloudiness. There's some general storminess really offshore of the East Coast. And again, like I said, uh, this was mostly from a cold front that happened a while ago. It's kind of being blocked here from moving any further. So it's mostly stationary at this point. Also for the Southeast and the Mid-Atlantic, a lot of thunderstorms rolled through yesterday. You can see those offshore of the East Coast kind of before the cold front they're kind of in between the cold front and the east coast here at this point. Those are those storms that actually came through last night and yesterday. I think the northeast had some of that as well. So yes, that is what that is. Uh, we see some storminess in general over there by the southeast. That is what likely will eventually be our tropical cyclone or potential tropical cyclone offshore of the east coast there. So that's something to watch. This was pretty early this morning, probably about 12 a.m. or 1 a.m. Let's move this towards a lot closer to maybe 3 or 4 a.m. here. And as you can see, a lot of that storminess has moved up further offshore of the East Coast there. What was onshore in Mississippi and Alabama and Georgia has now moved a little bit offshore of Georgia. And as you can see, by the time we are reaching about 5 a.m., the time I usually make my videos, we see that there is a lot of storms developing there offshore of the East Coast. So that shows us that this area is highly sufficient for development of storminess in general, which likely would also indicate tropical development is also uh, favorable in this region. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the sea surface temperature, see what that looks like, uh, and then we're going to break down the European model's probability of tropical depression and probability of tropical storm, and then I, we're actually going to show you what the European model is calling for and the GFS model in just a moment. Now here is our sea surface temperatures, and as you can see, we have some areas of cooler than normal temperatures actually offshore of Florida, Georgia, and South Carolina briefly, but then it very quickly, if you move further offshore, gets warmer than normal. So this storm is going to be moving over the colder than normal waters, and then eventually the warmer than normal waters. The important thing here, though, is that even temperatures that are slightly, very, very slightly below what is typical for this time of year are still warm enough for tropical development. So this isn't really going to matter too much. It's mostly the far below normal sea surface temperatures we would be watching for. Uh, temperatures that are 2 to 5 degrees Celsius below normal is where it could take it to the point where it would be unfavorable for tropical development. We see some of that in the southern Caribbean, an already unfavorable region usually, uh, but nothing too far below normal at this point. Here's the seven day change. This shows us how temperatures have changed over the past seven days. And as you can see, they've mostly warmed here for the Gulf, the Caribbean uh, areas over there. So this is an area that is rapidly warming actually. Here's the chart for the entire North Atlantic. And as you can see, it's been rapidly warming. Um, it almost looks like a stock chart. <laughs> I love this. Uh, it actually kind of crashes there in, in late May. And then we saw a big increase there towards the, the end of June. And then it slowly receded and then it's kind of going up more again. 
uh, kind of in a very similar aggressive heating pattern. I don't know exactly what causes this rapid heating uh, that's happened twice now on this chart, but it is quite interesting. Here's our probability of tropical depression here, according to the European model. And yesterday it was at about a 10 to 20% chance. And now we actually have a 40 to 50% chance in there, according to this model, offshore of Florida, Georgia, and South Carolina. So this probability has gone up significantly over the past 24 hours. And as we take a look at days three through six, you can see we now have a 20 to 30% chance there near South Carolina and North Carolina, and then eventually possibly offshore of there, according to this model. We also have a possibility a 10 to 20% chance probability here and possibility of tropical storm status as well. So this model is now thinking this storm could get a little bit more intense. Obviously super interesting stuff there from this model. This is why I needed to update you guys this morning because of the fact that it actually has shown such a dramatic increase in that probability. So that's obviously a big, big thing there. Uh, we've seen almost triple the probability on that European uh, probability of tropical depression. So that is obviously a big jump there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on. And we're going to take a look at the cyclonic vorticity according to the European model and the GFS model, one of which has this becoming a very strong cyclone actually. So we're going to take a look at that in just a moment. Now this is going to be actually about last night uh, on this frame. You can see that about 8 p.m. or so last night, this is when this was, and you can see a lot of that vorticity is over the southeast states up there at the top left of your screen. Now, this, what we're actually seeing on screen here is large-scale rotation. You know what else has large-scale rotation? Tropical cyclones, of course. A very large-scale rotation, but this is how we see that very, very large-scale rotation. And if you look at the bar on the lower, the lower portion of your screen there, the further to the right on that color shade it is, the more of that rotation there is. So you can see there's a bit of it over the southeast, but that's a very typical amount actually. The greens and the yellows is very typical in a stormy region. That's typically what we end up seeing. Now as we take this towards this afternoon actually, we see a little bit more of that developing offshore of the southeast. Uh, we see some of those oranges showing up, which is a little bit particular. But it's mostly by the time we're reaching tomorrow morning, Friday, July 23rd at about maybe 11 a.m. or so, we see a lot of those reds beginning to show up. And this is when it becomes a little bit more concerning. So this is when I think we do have some tropical development beginning for this region that already is very favorable. Notice it's also very far offshore. It's where those warmer than normal waters are already by this point. And I think that's why it's going to have an easier time developing. Now, by time we're reaching about 2 a.m. on Saturday, July 24th, according to this European model, look at that pink's uh, very bright pinks. That is indicating very uh, strong areas of large-scale rotation there. I think this is a, a very quickly developing storm, uh, probably a tropical depression by this point, if not a tropical storm on this European model. Very interesting there, 2 a.m. on Saturday. And look at that. By the time we're reaching Saturday afternoon, maybe about 3 p.m., definitely developed here. Uh, you, can, you can see a lot of those darker reds, those pinks. That is definitely a tropical cyclone that has formed according to that model. Now, the interesting thing here in contrast, because that's obviously just a model, we want to take it with a grain of salt and continue to pay attention to these updates and understand that models do change. Um, so that was not even my opinion. That is exactly what that model showed. Here's the GFS model, and it's just not quite as bad. We do see some of that cyclonic vorticity, which again is larger scale, uh, could mean some tropical development is happening here according to the GFS model as well but not nearly as much as that European model is showing. So this is just creating a very interesting setup here from the models. And this is going to be so fun to track with you guys. Uh, we have a very interesting setup with one model very on board with this tropical cyclone. And then we definitely have one model that is not at all on board with this tropical cyclone developing. Only time will tell what's right. And I'm going to continue to keep you guys updated. So stay tuned to us. Be sure to subscribe because you don't want to miss our updates on this storm. Uh, so yeah, GFS not showing hardly anything. For today's confidence tab, we're at a four out of six. Again, on the higher end of things, but not quite high yet. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, do you think this one is going to develop? And Ethan Galeski said, I think it may develop in about three to five days, but might not even grow into that big of a storm. And that's where I stand at this point as well. Don't think it'll become a hurricane or anything at this point, uh, but only time can tell because this one does have some warm waters to work with, uh, and that European model definitely is a little bit bullish on it, so we're going to watch and see what happens with that. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Platinum patrons, John Ben Bennick, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Larry LePan, and Donna Carnes. 
Alongside our Diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Lou Falego, Gary, John Khaleesi, Dwight Phelan, and Steven Crenenthal. If you would like to be a part of this exciting patron entry of the day, you can do so by joining our very awesome Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I'd also like to thank our channel members, Hair Farms one and Catbite as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button and leave a comment down below to help that YouTube algorithm out as I'm trying to kind of re-pick up this channel. Uh, obviously, the springtime is very hard on us weather YouTubers. For some reason, it always slows down. And then it's a very difficult task trying to get it to pick back up there in the later time of year where it always ends up doing so, uh, but not without y'all's help. So be sure to like the video and leave a comment down below to do those things. And also be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and if you like weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.